Yeah, we cool. Okay, good. Okay, so uh, we have um, this happening with Abraham, uh, Nahor, and then Haran. And then we have Lot and Haran uh, died in the presence of his father, Tira, in the land of his birth, the Ur of the Chaldeans. So Abraham, Nahor, and Haran were the three sons of Tira. So the next thing that happens is Abraham and Nahor took wives for themselves and the name of Abram's wife was Sarah and the name of uh, Nahor's wife was Milcah and the daughter of Haran and the father of Milcah and Iscah. And uh, Sarah was barren and ha she had no, ch no child. Now, later on, what's going to happen is that, again, when Abraham begins to select the son for his uh, for uh, his son, um, uh, you know, Abraham, Isaac, uh, when he selects a son for Isaac, he's going to send back to his home country. So it's going to be important that these names are remembered because they are going to be the people that he has a son to marry into. Hey, uh, they, they basically Vincent, married their cousins. Go ahead. Vincent, I question, um, what's your take on the passage where people always use the passage of blessing the Jews where it says, I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. Is that yeah. what you take? Is that what well, you know, that's, gonna, that's, that's getting ready to come. I think that's going to be in chapter 15. And so as we get to chapter 15, we'll talk about it. We're okay, gonna, we're I, going to, I was just curious what your take was if it was just Abraham or if it's talking to his whole lineage and the Jewish people. Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, as we go through this, you're going to see that he was a father to many nations. Right. So, uh, the the whole idea behind bless those, bless you, curse those, curse you, the, the blessing and the curse uh, uh, is already, the blessing of Abraham has already come up on us through Jesus Christ. But that that's going to be discovered as we continue on. Because again, as you... As we think about this, and I know what know where you're getting to, I'm, I kind of think where I know where you're coming from, because there is a Bible out there that actually puts that blessing on the Jews and the Jews alone, and we should all kowtow to the Jews in order to uh, get the blessing. And that's not what the meaning is, and it will become apparent as we continue the study. It, you know, as we continue on, you're going to see it become apparent. Tiba took Abraham, his son, and Lot. Uh, the son of Haran and his grandson and Sarah and his daughter-in-law, uh, Sarah, his daughter-in-law, his son's a Abraham's wife. Now, Abraham's wife was his sister also. A and they went out together early the Chaldeans in order to enter the land of Canaan. And they went as far as Haran and settled there. And in the days of Tira were 205, 205 years and Tira died. Uh, in Haran, and they are giving us a picture of where, where that is right there, right now. So uh, in Genesis 12 through 1 through 3, we say, now the Lord uh, said to Abraham, go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your house and uh, to a land that I will show you. And uh, that's, that's uh, the first time uh, he gets that uh, order. Now, here's the thing. He didn't, he, well, actually, it says the Lord said to him again. So uh, it seems like the Lord was trying to get Abraham to leave, but Abraham wouldn't leave until his father was dead and uh, that uh, people, family members started dying. And a lot of times people don't move until family members start dying and things start happening or COVID happens or something like that, you know, and that's what happened. And so then he makes him this promise in Genesis chapter 12. Then he makes it to him again in 15. And then he makes it to him again, I think, in, the, in 18. You said you were in 18 there, uh, uh, Bob. So I guess you, was, you, you saw that promise again. Something similar that mm -hmm. uh, I will make you a great nation. I bless you and, and make your name great. And, you, and so shall you be a blessing, right? And I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And, and then all the and all the nations uh, earth will be blessed. OK, so, yeah, there is in there. It is again there in Genesis chapter 12. I think that's what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. What's my take on it? Uh, mm -hmm. 
I, I certainly don't think it means the same thing that a lot of other people think uh, when it comes down to it, that uh, we should just, uh, you know, um, with the Palestinians and what's going on with Israel, I'm not feeling it. Okay. So I don't think that we get a blessing from just uh, giving Israel uh, a go ahead to just do whatever they want to do. And then also there is a question a lot of people have, well, who are the people that are occupying the land? And uh, when it comes down to being Zionists, right? Yeah. So, so I, yeah, I, we could we could uh, open that can of worms, but I don't think we'll get finished before eight thirty. So, um, Haran, uh, this is the place where we are, and Abraham took his wife, and they went there, right? So then uh, the Lord appeared to him, uh, Abraham, and said, "To your descendants, I will give this land." So he built an altar there to the Lord who appeared to him. Literally, he says, I will give you uh, to your seed. Now, here's the thing. Um, I noticed that when I was reading this, uh, that I was noticing that the word seed keeps coming up over and over again. So would you do me a favor as you are studying this, every time you see the word seed, underline it. Okay, I would think that that's important because this is the whole um, promise that uh, Abraham is getting. I'm going to do something for your seed. Your seed will be blessed. Your your what comes from you, your loins will be blessed, Abraham. And so this is what uh, God is saying. Now, again, in the very beginning of the book of Genesis. One and two and three, then we find out the snake uh, in the garden in chapter three were uh, dealing, they were dealing with the snake and he is trying to usurp the the woman or, uh, you know, uh, to take over the woman's thoughts. And he beguiled her. And then the, the Lord came in there and said something very strange. I'm going to put an enmity between your seed and, and her seed. So there's been a fight and a battle to keep the seeds uh, um, to keep the seeds separated. And during the Genesis 1 through 11, the whole idea was to protect the seed uh, from being corrupted. But the seed got corrupted and they ended up having to start humanity all over again. So in this particular second part of Genesis, we're going to see the seed being used as a... a uh, a system of promise, right? It would, the seed is actually being used as a, um, you know, the promise uh, is preserved in the seed. So that's where we, that's where we are. Uh, any questions about that? Thoughts about it? Okay. Well, okay. So we're talking about his seed, and then as we go on, it talks about Lot was the nephew of Abraham, Abram, uh, Eliezer of Damascus. And then it says, then behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, this man will not be your heir, but the one, uh, one who shall come from forth from your body, your own body, he shall be your heir. And uh, so you know that Abraham was quite old when he uh, was made this promise and God made him a promise that he was going to have uh uh, generations, the de descendants that were going to come from his loins to come from his own body. But um, he ended up and uh, he tried to, his wife convinced him that, okay, it's possible that maybe uh, it's going to come from someone else. It's going to come from, uh, the blessing is going to come from you and another woman. So he convinced, she convinced Abraham to uh, have, um, uh, Hagar to become his uh, concubine, yes. uh, and the concubine is a a woman who is, um, you know, a, a concubine is a woman that is kind of like a side chick. I guess that's what you want to call her. <laughs> <laughs> this is Genesis fifteen, uh, the covenant ceremony. So uh, he said to him, "Bring me a three year old heifer and a three year old female." a goat and a three-year-old ram, turtle dove, and a pigeon. And uh, then he brought them these and he cut them in two and laid them uh, half 
opposite of each other. And so he's going to make a covenant. He's cutting a deal with Abraham. And he tells Abraham, uh, when you cut these animals and the blood is going uh, there, he comes with a smoking lamp in between them to uh, say, surely he's going to do, he's going to give him what he promised to give him, which was he's going to have his own uh, uh, uh a child is going to have Isaac to come from him instead of Ishmael. So this was the promise. And it came to pass when the sun was set and it's very dark and behold, appeared the smoking oven and a flaming torch, which passed between the pieces. And on that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham in Genesis 15, 17 through 18. So uh, these most significant key passages, I believe, come in Genesis chapter 12, Genesis chapter 15, and uh, I believe what, what's going on in 18 again, in 18, and then we, then we move on. I think, um, but I think each time there's also a famine, God comes and reassures Abraham that he's going to make him the, uh, a great nation. And it takes a very long time. Abraham doesn't have a child till he's 100 years old. Uh, I think when God calls him, he's around 75 years old. And, uh, and uh, let's see here. Let's move on. Quest for a son. Lot, the nephew of Abraham. Yeah, or Eliezer of Damascus. So what, I, what Abraham says to God is that, look, um, God, then... I haven't had a child yet. I'm, I'm getting pretty old here. Uh, Sarah's very old. And so what is who's, who's the person that's going to be my son? Is it going to be Lot? Or is it going to be Eliezer, the, the servant who serves me in my house? And so this is kind of where uh, Abraham is believing that uh, this is going to lead to. Or is it going to be Ishmael? You know, so all of this. Uh, these are the people right here. And then, of course, Isaac comes along, which means laughter. Yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah. So Abraham is trying to figure out how this promise that God has made is going to come to pass. Kind of like us. You know, we all look for um, other ways to get around this issue of faith that God said, you know, God said it and I, I believe it, but I think it may not come the same way uh, that God said it, that it, it may come another way or, 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 you know, we try to help God out. I mean, I don't know how many of you guys have tried to help God out. I've tried to help him out plenty of times, especially at 1159, you know, uh, when the clock is about to strike 12 and I think, wow, you know, if, if God doesn't do something right now, then it's not going to happen. And mm -hmm. uh, but God's always come through, you know, as, exactly like he said he was going to come through. And we've always been in wonder and awe about it. But mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, as we move on, it says Abraham called to faith, promise of a seed, sojourned in Egypt, denial in Haran. Um, Lot separates from Abraham. Now, okay, so in Genesis 12, uh, what happens is that um, that Abraham gets blessed tremendously when he goes to Egypt uh, because what he does is he tells uh, the people of e Egypt that Sarah is not his wife, basically that, he's, uh, that she's his sister. Now, uh, does anybody remember why he said that? He was afraid. Yeah. Uh, why? She was too beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, was, which is strange because she's really old. And I, I'm trying to picture her. I'm still trying to picture her uh, because of the, she was she she made quite a stir in Egypt because it wasn't just that Abraham um, had they to tell her that. They but but that. When, she, when the men of Egypt saw her, they ran and told Pharaoh right. that it wasn't like, um, you know, they said, well, you know, this is a really, really knockout woman out here, you know? Yeah. And so uh, amazing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and well over 70, you know, and <laughs> really, really good. 
age differently for sure. Yeah, very strange. War on Sodom. Okay, so what happens is that a little bit later on, as we're reading the story, and then you guys read the story, you'll find out that there was a war that was made on Sodom by these kings, and these kings got up, got upset with Sodom because the uh, the king of Sodom uh, decided that they were not going to pay the tribute to the other kings anymore, and so this. And so they decided that they were going to have a war and prove who was the toughest because they were paying the tribute to about five kings. And they just said, well, no, we're not going to do that anymore. So that was this caused a war. And of course, they won. The, the other kings won the war against uh, Sodom and took Lot away to, um, uh, you know, he took Lot away in the captivity which caused Abraham to rise up with the men of his house. And they went down and snuck up on those kings, plundered the kings and took all the stuff that they had stole from uh, Sodom and brought it back. And, uh, and, and then, you know, of course, the cowardly kings of Sodom wanted to try to give Abraham some money. And he was like, no, you don't need to give me anything because when he left Egypt, because God had disturbed the dream of Pharaoh, and told Pharaoh, if you don't give this man back his wife, and also, of course, he had given him all of these, uh, all the, all of this gold and all of this silver and all this money and these servants because his wife, wife was so beautiful. And he had given Abraham all this stuff uh, that Abraham had actually become quite wealthy, and Lot did too. And that's why Lot went down to Sodom because they couldn't get along. Uh, the two of them together being being that they both had so much stuff. So in order to separate in peace, uh, Lot took his men and his servants and all of the cattle that he had. And then he took and went towards Sodom and Abraham went another direction and took all of his cattle and went another direction. So when Sodom got hit, it was partly because God was judging Sodom because Earlier in the verse, if you look at the scripture, it says the man of Sodom was very wicked. And Lot already knew that when he went down there and he got in trouble. And what's going to happen to Lot is Lot's going to end up with nothing. Okay, so he's going to end up with nothing, but that's yet to come. Uh, there's a covenant ceremony. I think we just went over that with the uh, verse chapter 15. Then we got Ishmael born. Uh, and then... Uh, Ishmael was born from the uh, wife of um, not um, Abraham's concubine, which is Abraham's wife's servant that she got out of Egypt. So this was a Egyptian woman. Okay, so when we see her, she's a, she's going to be a darker skinned Egyptian woman and. Uh, I don't know what whether or not Abraham was, I don't know what shade he was, but I'm just saying, I'm making a point that she was the Egyptian woman. And she she bore um she bore Isaac for, I mean she bore Ishmael for Abraham, uh, and that was supposed to be his promised son. But the covenant was not going to come through Ishmael, it was going to come through Isaac, right? So then we have Unless you're, unless Go you're, ahead. unless you're uh, a Muslim, then they say the that Ishmael was the chosen seed. Yeah, the um, the 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 Islamic people have a tendency to say that, right, and that it was stolen. Uh, so th this war is still going on even today. The family know? feud because it's they refused to accept feud. Isaac. Go ahead. Oh, I just said it's a family feud that started back then and it's still going on. Yeah, that, that's a and that right there is part of American culture, you know, family feud, you know. And so it's kind of like a a joke on us when they play that game on TV because they are going all the way back to something very biblical, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so Abraham is instructed um, now at a particular point that, all right, 
uh, God says to Abraham, what I want you to do is I want you to take everybody in your house and circumcise them. Now, this is painful. And I'm talking about Abraham was 99 years old at this particular time. In chapter 17, it says Abraham was 99 years old. And the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, you know, welcome to me before me and be perfect. Now, that's scary because when God tells you to be perfect, you know, he's getting ready to ask you to do something really extreme. And so that's what happened with Abraham. He got ready to do something really extreme, which was the circumcision was going to be cutting the foreskin of your um, male genitalia off and everybody in his house. So he, Abraham had to not only circumcise himself, but he had to circumcise all his, his children and then <laughs> the servants who were there that were male. I'm sure that the women was, was you know, happy. Having a good time with that. Yeah. What you guys doing? What are you guys doing? Yeah. You're all bloody. It's even there in the Bible right there in Genesis. Like She's like, what the heck are you guys doing? Yeah. <laughs> So Abraham has to be the one to cut everybody up too. You know, that's really crazy. So anyway, <laughs> the boss put you, an old man, 99 years old, got to come up to you with a knife and get ready to uh, saw it, you know, cut it. So anyway, that's what happened. Uh, then you have the destruction of Sodom, which God had warned Abraham about it. And here's one significant thing that he says in, in chapter 18 he says, look, I, I can't keep a secret from you because God, it's not God's nature to keep secrets from prophets. Hmm. Okay, so Abraham was a prophet and God told him before it happened that he was getting ready to go down and destroy Sodom because the cry of Sodom, sin had come up to heaven and God was tired of it, right? And so Abraham was able to negotiate with God and he tried to cut a deal with God that if he could find 10 righteous in the city, then he wouldn't, uh, God wouldn't destroy the city, but there wasn't even 10 righteous. And the Bible says that God delivered just Lot. So that's found in the book of Hebrews when it says he delivered just Lot. And, um, His which, you know, has anybody ever read that passage there? Yes. Yeah, right, right. So that's, that quite literally means not that Lot was just, but, you know, of course, you know, God could call anybody just if he wants to, but that that he only, he was the only righteous that uh, could come out or the person that was selected to be given that place of repentance. And so uh, then um, you get the sojourn in Gera and the denial of Sarah again with Abimelech. And so we have that in chapter 20 and 21, Ishmael separates from Abraham. And uh, Ishmael is separating from Abraham because there's a big fight in the house going on with the women because uh, finally, um, finally, and I'm thinking here, she ran away earlier too. But finally, uh, things have reached ahead and they've got to separate, right? It's gone. Abraham's faith test, all right? Blessing of the seed. So, all right, so Abraham is told now that uh, Ishmael is gone and now that he has uh, only Isaac and Isaac is the apple of his eye, finally they have this baby. Uh, at 100 years old, Abraham has his child at 100 years old. Sarah is like- Laugh at it elated and so this blessed seed he tells god tells him uh, now i want you to sacrifice it hmm. and <laughs> then uh you know i'm sure that abraham then he was, i don't want to i do not want the, this to happen so abraham uh, is tested and Abraham, and Abraham called the name of that place the lord will provide because as he said in this day, in the mount of the Lord, it will be provided. So um, chapter 22, verse 14 is miraculous because um, Abraham takes Isaac, I mean, take yeah, takes uh, Isaac up to uh, be sacrificed. And just before he thrust the knife into 
uh, this 30 year old man's chest, uh, then he is um, able now to, um, is a possibility, you know, that, that uh, a ram shows up in the bush. Now, the thing is, is that I'm thinking that Isaac is a lot, um, a lot older here. Um, that I don't think it's like this little kid um, because the years don't match up. So I'm thinking somewhere between 17 to 30, you know, uh, we're, we're talking about a, we're talking about a, a, a guy that's pretty old. Uh, he's able to overpower his father, but at the will of his father and behest of his father, he decides to do it. Uh, that would might make a good research project for anybody who wants to go back and look up. What do you, how old was Isaac actually when Abraham got ready to sacrifice him? We're not talking about a little kid. We're talking about somebody who's much older. Um, I think he was helping him to carry the wood for the sacrifice, wasn't he? Yeah, right. So he had, he had to be physically mature enough that he was able to carry a load like that. Yeah, yeah. So he was he was well. I mean, he he could have been able to overpower his father, which made the story even more powerful. Because he was willing to submit to the will of the father, which what is that? What is that a picture of? You guys who are Bible scholars, what do you what do you think that's a picture of? Jesus. Jesus, Jesus being willing, uh, mm -hmm. or nearly being nearly equal to the oh, father, the equal to the father, goodness. but he's willing to submit himself to the will of the father. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a weak Jesus. It's you know it's one who uh, the Bible says that he basically, um, he was equal to the father, but uh, he didn't kind of robbery to submit himself to the father at all. So yeah, Jesus did that. Okay, here we got back, we go back to the seed. Now they're gonna say the seed of the serpent mm -hmm. is Ishmael. They're gonna say the seed of the serpent, you know, like the whole theory behind seed of the serpent is Cain, seed of the serpent is Ishmael. Anybody who is not of the chosen line is the seed of the serpent. I don't really receive that. I think the seed of the serpent is um, spiritual, true enough, but it's also something more carnal going on here in uh, the line of these people. But because we're following the story of Abraham so closely, we're not really dealing with the Nephilim at, at all right now, but we will deal with them later in the stories when it comes down uh, to the uh, deliverance from Egypt going back to the promised land, they're going to run into the sons of the Nac and the Nephilim and, and the uh, Raphims. Uh, so these are going to be the seed of the serpents. But anyway, Abraham uh, seed uh, is Isaac uh, and Abraham has uh, Ishmael. They put him up on the seed of serpent <laughs> and Jacob and Jacob has Esau, seed of the serpent. Uh, whose seed are you? <laughs> so either way, the rejects are the seed of the serpent. You know, you can look at it like that in a spiritual way too, in a sense that uh, Jesus said, you are your father, the devil, <laughs> because you're not doing the will of the father. So uh, that's, that's the seed of the serpent here. Uh, let's move on. Uh, the Jacob's narrative. Uh, his name is Heel Grabber. Uh, we got Jacob. We can move on from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob. Jacob is going to have 12 sons. Uh, the last of uh, the greatest son is going to be Joseph, of course. And he's going to be the person who sits in the house of bread. So when he, um, he sits in the house of bread, he's the perfect picture of Jesus Christ because he becomes the suffering servant who was uh, betrayed by his own brothers for 20 pieces of silver. Jesus was uh, sold for 30 pieces of silver and Joseph would become sold for 20 pieces of silver. He would be betrayed by his own brothers. He would be put in a pit and then he would be raised up out of the pit and sold and, and taken on a journey to Egypt. And Jesus was put in the grave uh, and then he was also um, carried away uh, to the cross. And so all of that, you can see the parallel between Jesus 
And then at the end, uh, Jesus is resurrected. And at the end of the story, Jacob is raised up to become second to the father, uh, to the, uh, to the king as Jesus is second to the father. So this is the story of Jacob in the, in the nutshell. And we're getting down to the end. So I, I don't know, make sure. Okay. So anyway, the, the whole this big story here with Jacob is the birthright, right? This is the, this is what we need to keep our eye on because Jacob is born as a twin and the twin in this particular passage, you're going to see that the twin, there are always going to be two, two yes. people. There's going to be I, Abraham and uh, you got Abraham had um, Isaac and Ishmael. Ishmael was the firstborn, but the uh, Isaac was the secondborn and he was the one that was chosen. You're going to see Jacob was, uh, Abraham, uh, let me see, we had, Isaac had two sons, and one was named Jacob, and one was named Esau. Esau was the firstborn, but Jacob would be the secondborn, and he's the one, the one to receive the promise, right? And then you're going to keep on down the line, and you, you're going to keep noticing that every time there's a first and a secondborn, the one that is born again, or the second birth, is the one that's going to receive the blessing. That's what you're going to see. You're going to continue to see that throughout, uh, even in Cain and Abel. Uh, Cain born first, Abel born second, Abel receives the blessing all the way throughout this entire thing, right? So you're going to keep seeing that over and over. Uh, the birthright comes on the second born. What does that mean when it comes to Jesus saying, you must be born again? Mm, that's There's the blessing. <laughs> yeah, the blessing is not on the first birth. We're born into this world. We're born of flesh, but we're born, but the blessing is on being born of the spirit. And so we, we see that, which is which is like a tapestry. It's like a, a, a woven tapestry of uh when we think about the Bible, the Bible is like uh this this beautiful picture that has been woven for us that I don't think anybody could have actually thought of this and, and came up with such a clever way of continuing to put the same story over and over again, uh, Jacob and Esau and Jacob. And then you go down and then you're going to get to David and Saul, Saul being the first King and David being the second King. And you just keep looking over and over and you're going to see this story repeated over and over and again, the Bible took something like 1,500 years to write. It was written on 300, three different continents of the world. And we're, we're looking at uh, over maybe 40 different authors and all of these people coming together with the same story. I don't know how, uh, how it's possible except through the Holy Spirit. You, you see what I'm saying? So as we, as we continue to go on here, so uh, you got uh, his name, birthright, is the blessing, uh, Jacob's ladder. We talked. Uh, you need to read up on that um, because God makes it in the promise when Jacob sees the angels ascending and descending uh, from this ladder. Uh, it, it, God makes Jacob that a promise that He's going to bless him with the carrying of the birthright. So even though he tricked Esau out of his birthright by stealing the birthright from e um uh from Esau, he still uh gives him this name when he wrestles with God. And when he wrestles with God, uh the the, the man who wrestles with God changes his name from Jacob to Israel. Okay, so all right. Vincent. Yeah, go ahead. Quick, quick question again. Uh what why do you think that it says that Esau. I'm sorry. I said when the Bible says that God hated Esau, Esau I have hate, I have hated. Yeah, that's a beautiful question. A uh, very good question because uh, when it comes down to this whole thing, the whole story is showing us that God chooses whom he wants to choose. And so um, what it says about Esau is really Scary, because what he says, he tells, uh, the Bible says that Esau didn't receive the blessing, even though he sought it with tears. 
uh, and what, in other words, God rejected him, even though he saw it with tears, he did not get it because God is sovereign and he chooses whom he wants to choose. So you didn't choose God, but God chose you. And so we can see through the story of Esau that God has the right to not choose you. He, he can just choose whom he wants to. And see, it's, God is not evil that he, hasn't, uh, that he doesn't choose you. It's just the fact that you were not that fortunate. You were not given the grace. So grace is something that God gives. It's not, it's like, it's like, it's like, I don't care how much you knock on the person's door and try to sell them Amway. If they don't want it, they don't want it. And, uh, you know, they might you somebody might be trying to sell you Avon and you say, no, I do not want Avon. I'm not taking, I'm not, no matter what you do. And the person may call you, they may put, drive up in your driveway. They may bang on your door and you say, I am not going to buy your Avon. And so they leave disappointed. And then you have somebody else that you have favor upon. And you say, they come and say, well, would you buy, uh, would you buy some Avon from me? <laughs> and, then, and you say, yes, I will. And so it's be, that's what we call uh, God's using his own sovereign will. How do you know when he chooses you? Well, this is this is something the Bible says that we are like potter. We are like clay in the hands of a potter. And God says, basically, and throughout the scripture, he says, is it, am I, are you angry with me because I'm good? I choose, if I choose to make one pot for honor and one for dishonor, is what Paul said, who are you to question me? I'm God. So yes, God does have favorites. Joseph was the favorite son of, uh, of, of his father, Jacob, and they hated that. And so God is saying that, yes, I, I have favor for you, but uh, you know, don't think that I just, I just willy-nilly give away favor. I, I choose whom I want to choose. Yeah. Uh, think about the son of perdition. The son of perdition was uh, Judas. Jesus said it'd be better that if that man had never been born. That's, well, cold, you know that's been... cold blooded to me. But <laughs> that... how do you know when you chose chosen? Really? Yeah, that's <laughs> something, ain't it? We get it. Um, yeah, you're chosen because you're here. You got the Holy Spirit in you, and you feel you can feel His presence. Uh, you chosen because you haven't you haven't hardened your heart to the Lord, and but see these people like Esau, he kept hardening his heart to the Lord. Saul was a hard headed person, uh, but when you're chosen, you have that soft spirit that the, the the blessed are the meek, the poor, the you know the humble. When you're chosen, you know it. You you got that Holy Spirit, and you begin to work the works of Him that's you know that called you into His marvelous light. So I believe that that's one sure sign. You don't have to be afraid that you're not chosen. I'm just saying that you're very fortunate and very blessed to be among those who are chosen. Amen. And you can give God glory and thanks for that because, I mean, you know. Jesus. Yeah, that's, you know, it's something else. So anyway, we come down to the end of this whole thing here. The problem of favorite, favoritism, that's what you guys are talking about. Uh, Y'all don't like favoritism, <laughs> but again, that's the way God works. You know, God uh, actually, uh, he has a favorite and, uh, uh, you know, each one of these people uh, were, had their own favorites too, you know? And so we see that as a result of that. So anyway, I think you, we're, we're just here at the end. I, I don't have time to go over any more. Uh, but uh, yeah, we were going to go to eight thirty. You guys have your um, you have the rest of the uh, the information on. Um, let's see here. Let me go to. You have on it. The information should be up and available on the 
um, inside of the lesson platform, you know, uh, True Bible uh, School. And you should be able to just go through that. And so if there's any questions, just answer the questions there. All right. Okay. Okay. Are there any other questions? All right. Yeah. I Can you hear me? Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I just was wondering how, how do you reconcile God having favorites with the passage that says that God is no respecter of persons? Yeah, he definitely doesn't respect people, does he? Because <laughs> that can go both ways. Right. Yeah, if you, if you don't respect the persons, then God can, uh, this is the, the favor is, it has nothing to do with you at all uh, or what you did. And if you're looking at it from your perspective, that, okay, God is choosing because of the person is uh, uh, special in some sense. Uh, no, that's not what that's saying. It's saying that, God doesn't, um, you know, God treats everybody basically uh, from his own sovereign will. It's not like uh, anybody's twisting his arm. Uh, he's, he's, you, can't, you can't persuade God. You can't uh, motivate God to be more than what God is, which is God. Now, again, we can pray to him, but again, when it comes down to it, we have to be walking in his will. If we're willing and obedient, the Bible says, then we will eat the good of the land. If we're willing and obedient. And generally, God is good, and we don't have to worry about him not being good. And we don't have to persuade him of anything. We just really have to kind of uh, walk in his will and submit to his own his own uh, ways, right? So when he when it says respect the person, I don't I don't see that okay. it's like uh God being bound by that that he cannot discriminate between one and the other i think that has to do basically with uh you know god's nature that that you know he's not a respected person in terms of who he is you know uh, but it's like you're not gonna make god say well you know you bless me so bless my son you know uh I don't think God works like that. I think God just basically deals with each person, uh, basically the just by being that person. And if God decides, like for instance, He decided with Abraham that all of the people in His generation would be blessed, that's that's His uh, that was His choice. Ooh, yeah, I don't, I don't see it any other way. I don't know. You know, there's something to think about, but I, I don't see it that way. Yeah, I'm going to say is that. Any other thoughts? Okay. Well, all right. Well, I'm going to just get on out of here. And uh, we we prayed already. So we're going to say, uh, Lord, uh, until we meet again, we ask that each person be continually blessed in Jesus' name. You guys have a good night. And Jesus. God bless you. And thanks for showing up. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Uh, God bless. Okay. God bless. Bye-bye. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.